the abstract phrase. Let's take a detailed look at the grammatical structure that I call the abstract phrase. I introduced this phrase in previous videos. However, in this video, I'd like to take a much deeper look at this interesting figure. There are two base forms of the abstract phrase. One is the having form, such as in the phrase having worked. The second one is the having been form. And an example would be having been employed. So let's look at the having form, the first form. Having sanded the entire wall, you may now apply the primer. So here we have our base form number one, and this is our study sentence. All right, this is the sentence we'll be using. Having sanded the entire wall, you may now apply the primer. So here we have an abstract phrase, and it's extended. In other words, it has the modifiers or complements or whatever that go with it. And here you have a genuine clause. A genuine clause can stand by itself, but an abstract phrase is synthetic. It must be joined to something. Okay, having sanded the entire wall, you may now apply the primer. So in our study sentence, we see that having sanded is our abstract phrase in its base form, in its simplest base form. And we can analyze that farther. Having is your abstract pro form, which I taught in previous videos, and sanded is your abstract past participle. Okay? Let's look at how the abstract phrase base form one is realized. In other words, how it comes into being. Keep in mind that the voice in each original genuine clause is the active voice. In the active voice, the subject is the agent of the verb's action. In the passive voice, the subject receives the verb's action. So we see here, we have the active voice in our first genuine clause. We have the active voice in our second. Now, the whole idea is we want to combine these two sentences. In other words, the mind does this. The mind does this at a speed that's faster than the speed of light. So here we have an omission. We take out the words, you will have, and we take out the period. All right, that's the first step. Then we insert the abstract pro form. You'll know this from my previous videos. Having, having stands in for these words here. It substitutes for these words. And then we insert the comma. We make this a lowercase y. Then we have having sanded the entire wall. You may now apply the primer. So having sanded is our abstract phrase base form number one. And then when you, when you add your modifiers, complements, and other words in your phrase, we can call it extended. Or you could say full abstract phrase. Having sanded the entire wall is your full phrase, and this is simply your base form here, having sanded. Let's now look at the abstract phrase base form two, the having been form. Now, if you go on the internet, you'll see people talking about this, and you'll hear a hundred different explanations, all right, and definitions. But I go with my own. I go with the one that I that I figured out through a lot of study and meditation. So here we have base form to study sentence. This is the sentence that we were using now, right here. Okay, having been accepted by the committee, he could now join. So here you see your abstract phrase and it's extended because it has its complements and modifiers and whatnot. Having been accepted by the committee, Okay, now here we see having been accepted is our abstract phrase base form. It's just the very basic form of this structure that I kind of invented. I mean, I didn't really invent it, but I, I've classified it now. In other words, I've I put it um, where it belongs. Now here having is your abstract pro form, which we talked about. Been is a past participle, but it's now an abstract past participle. 
it is not functioning how it does in any other application. This is the only application in which it functions this way, and thus we call it abstract. And except it is an abstract past participle, we know that from my previous videos. We see clearly that this example of base form 2 contains not just one, but two abstract past participles. So you might ask this, where did the extra participle bin come from? Let's look at how the abstract phrase base form 2 is realized, in other words, how it comes into being in the mind. Keep in mind that the voice in the first of the two original genuine clauses is in the passive voice, not the active. This point is critical. Because the first sentence is in the passive voice, it supplies the extra participle bin. Okay? We're in the passive voice now. In other words, in the passive voice, the subject isn't, isn't performing the action. The subject's basically receiving the action. Okay? He had been accepted by the committee. The committee does the accepting, not the subject. All right? So here's where we get the past participle bin that we need. Now, we omit, we take out the words he had, and we take out the period, and then we insert the word having, that's our abstract pro form, right? And we insert a comma, and we change this to a lowercase h. See, the mind does all this. Even as we, we speak, as I sit here speaking and you're listening, the mind's doing all this automatically at, at a super fast speed. So the net result, having been accepted by the committee, comma, he could now join, period. So here we have our synthetic part, our synthetic clause. It has to be joined to a genuine clause. That's, that's the way my system works. I have levels. I have genuine, synthetic, and elliptical levels. That's my whole system. That's how I think. That's how my mind figures this stuff out. So now we have having been accepted, and we see clearly it's our abstract phrase base form number two. And here's your extended version with your modifiers and your complements and whatnot. Okay? So that should be pretty clear. Theoretically, there are some key points to keep in mind regarding the formation of abstract phrases. One, it is logical to refer to the abstract phrase as such because it naturally contains elements that are, that are indeed abstract. Well, you have your abstract pro form, which I proved in previous videos, and nobody else calls it this. No, no one else has figured it out. And then sanded is an abstract past participle, and I think I'm the only one who uses this term but it's accurate. And then with the having been form, all right, you still have your abstract pro form. Now you have your first abstract past participle, and then you have your second one. That's a beautiful thing, actually, if you think it through. Two, key point, having, as noted in my previous videos, can be only one thing as it functions specifically in the abstract phrase. It's an abstract pro form. It is not a gerund verbal. It is not a participle verbal. It is not a normal verb. And it is not an auxiliary verb. It can be only one thing. Point number three. The abstract past participle, as noted in my previous videos, can be only what its name imparts. As it functions specifically in the abstract phrase, it is not an ordinary past participle, nor is it a participle verbal. Some grammar experts go so far as to call the word bin a perfect participle. However, when the word bin is used with the abstract pro form having, it cannot be considered perfect in the tense sense because having is not an auxiliary verb. And auxiliary verbs are ordinarily the critical determinants in creating tense. If you think this through, you'll understand what I'm saying. Point number four, the abstract phrase and the condition phrase are, in essence, cousins. And this is another beautiful thing. Let's look at this. 
In what way are the abstract phrase and condition phrase related? First, let's review the formation of the condition phrase from my previous videos. We take two genuine clauses that we wish to combine. The first of the two is in the passive voice. The second is in the active voice. So here we have it. The passive voice in our first genuine clause, our active voice in the second. You see here, wall has been sanded. Well, the wall didn't sand itself. All right, the subject is not, is not performing the action. But here, you apply. Here in the active voice, the subject is performing the action. All right, so now we omit the word has, we omit the period. We insert our abstract pro form. We insert the comma. We make this a lowercase y. And we end up with the entire wall having been sanded. Okay, that's an abstract base form number two, right there. But if you look at this, and this is what I discovered a long time ago, and it kind of made me happy, you see that you have a condition phrase. Now, in the old days, this was called an absolute phrase. I made videos on that, but absolute phrase is a horrible name, and I changed it and I fixed it. The entire wall, having been sanded, is a condition phrase. That's in my previous videos. So you see, key point number five is the condition phrase can be an abstract phrase carrier. It's a carrier. It has the abstract base form in it. Point number six, you can omit having been, all right, from the condition phrase, yet still impart sufficient meaning. People do that all the time when they talk. They'll just, instead of saying this, the mind quickly goes to this. The entire wall sanded, comma, you may now apply the primer. See, that's how the mind goes. We speak elliptically. We speak as uh, concise and quickly as possible. I mean, most normal people do. So in the end, then, it, it, for review, we see that we have normal verbs. You could call it a regular verb or an action verb, whatever. So you see sand here is in its base form, right? That would be your present basic tense. You see sanding is a participle. It's a present participle. And this would be the future progressive case, excuse me, tense. Then you see sanded, which is a past participle. That's clear. And this is your past basic tense, or you could say past simple, whatever. <clears throat> now here's the verbals that we talked about. Present participle as a noun. When a present participle works as a noun, sometimes it's called a gerund. I don't like this name, and eventually I'll probably trash it, but for now I just let you know that that's what it's called. All right, and you see here that the noun, this, this verbal acting as a noun, is actually the subject in this sentence. And here's a present participle acting as an adjective or noun complement, a sanding block, right? And it complements in the forward direction, so we would say it's categoric. Now here's a past participle functioning as an adjective or noun complement, sanded wood, right? It's modifying or complementing in the forward direction. And here we have the chair sanded, he sat comfortably. Well, you see here, if you've been paying attention, that's a condition phrase. And we know that this sanded can complement backwards, so that would be called anaphoric. Now we have my little innovation, the abstract past participle. But like I said, that's the whole point of this video, is to show you there's two different forms, two different base forms. The past participle in abstract base form one, all right, here we have having sanded. Sanded is your abstract past participle. It is not the same as this sanded or this sanded. It is not functioning the same. And then your past participle in base form two, um, having been sanded. And here again, sanded is your abstract past participle. And it's just simply in a different form because you have the word been in there. So that is my thorough explanation of the abstract phrase. And in this, in this video, we, we saw that the condition phrase can and will 
contain ordinarily an abstract phrase. It's a beautiful thing. That's it for now, and uh, thanks for being incredibly patient. I'd hope to see you in the next video.